learn to complete the square, we need to figure out and really understand properly what a perfect square is. So I want to start out talking about integer perfect squares, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, or 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, etc. If I take the square root of a perfect square, I get a nice integer back. Square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3, etc. If we think about integers that are not perfect squares, the square root of 2 is approximately 1.414. It goes on for a long time, right? It, it keeps going. 1.414, etc. It, it does. It's not an integer, it's not a beautiful finished number. Not a perfect square. So now let's think about integer perfect squares. The square root of x squared is x and the square root of x plus 2 all squared equals x plus 2. But notice x plus 2 all squared, I could actually foil that out Notice I'm writing an equal sign. I'm not just leaving it blank and I'm not writing these crazy things like this above. Don't do that. And if I foil this out, I will get x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4, or that equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. So that actually means the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals the square root of the perfect square x plus 2 all squared, which is equal to the quantity x plus 2. Now let's think about what is not a perfect square. This does not equal x plus 3. Notice a perfect square that did equal x plus 3 would be x plus 3 all squared and that would actually be x squared plus 6x plus 9 and that would equal x plus 3. Now I'm going to pause a little bit and tell you what's wrong here is this is not a perfect square it's lacking the plus 6x in the middle and I can prove it to you if x equals 4, then I have the square root of 16 plus 9, and that of course is equal to the square root of 25. That actually is a perfect square, that equals 5. But if you had said to me the square root of x squared plus 9 equals x plus 3, and x equals 4, well, you're trying to tell me that that equals 7. So you're trying to tell me that the square root of 25 equals 7, and it does not. So all you have to do is plug some values in to see this doesn't work. This is not a perfect square. So let's apply the idea of completing the square to rewrite this quadratic function in vertex form. So I'm going to start with f of x, and I'm going to group all the x terms together, x squared, plus 4x plus 7, just got the number by itself, and then I'm going to complete the square. To complete the square, I take one half the coefficient of the x term, so that's one half times 4, and square it. Now I write that as 2 squared equals 4, and I want to see you keep this part when you write out your problem. So this equals x squared plus 4x plus 0 plus 7. And I think you will agree that these are the same. And I'm going to say in this case 4 minus 4 equals 0. So I'm going to write this as x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 4 plus 7. Now remember, vertex form has the form f of x equals some constant a multiplied by x minus h all squared, a perfect square here, plus k. So what I need to do is I need to get a perfect square. So I have x squared plus 4x plus 4, that is a perfect square. And I'm going to take this negative 4 
outside of the parentheses, so that's minus 4 and then plus 7. I'm going to notice I have a perfect square here. So this is going to give me x plus 2 all squared and negative 4 plus 7 is plus 3. So the vertex form will be f of x equals x plus 2 squared plus 3. And a in this case is 1, because this is a nice easy one. h in this case is negative 2, and k in this case is 3. So this problem now is to complete the square and to write the quadratic function in vertex form. So here's a reminder of what vertex form looks like. Now we do not have a leading coefficient of 1, so we have f of x. Now remember, I always want to group the x values together. So I have 2x squared plus 12x plus 8. And then I'm going to factor out the common factor in the x value, so that'll be 2. So that'll give me x squared plus 6x plus 8. And then I've got to think about completing the square. So that's 6 divided by 2 all squared, or 3 squared equals 9. So now I have 2 times x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 9 plus 8. Now I need a perfect square, and the perfect square is going to be here. So this is 2 times x squared plus 6x plus 9. And now if I want to take this negative 9 out of the parentheses, well, I have to have a plus 2 times a negative 9 plus 8. So I'm going to get 2 times x plus 3 all squared, because this is part of my perfect square, minus 18 plus 8. So this will be 2 times x plus 3 all squared minus 10. So the vertex form is 2 multiplied by the perfect square x plus 3 all squared minus 10, which means a is 2, h is negative 3, k is negative 10.